Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic, and welcome back to Disney Plus's The Mandalorian. Uh, this time on Season 1, Episode 2, Chapter 2, titled The Child. And I think we can guess who that child is. Based on what, how the last episode ended, I think we can guess what the, what the, who the child is. And it's Baby Yoda, but not only is Baby Yoda the child, Baby Yoda is also the bounty. So we were introduced to The Mandalorian, who is a bounty hunter. Started off as a foundling, so I think, you know, I mean, I took those flashback um, scenes to um, to infer that, you know, he was taken as a child um, and trained to be a bounty hunter along with other Mandalorians. Um, he's the, I think, I, th I, d I don't know, my, I think, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's because it hasn't been referenced yet or is it just because my, like, lack of in-depth understanding of the Star Wars lore and its universe, but I don't know if it means that Boba Fett and Jango Fett are bounty hunters too, or if they just have the same helmets or something. I don't know if they I don't know if they counted as bounty bounty hunters too. Uh, but the Mandalorian is, you know, as of right now, the most bounty huntery <laughs> bounty hunter we know of and we've seen. Um, played by Pedro Pascal, and they they, they, they kept, I think so far my favorite thing about that character is that they kept the voice behind so that you know because I think he is a character that does not take his helmet off for any reason. Um, so it's you know it's good to know that it's it's very much Pedro Pascal under there. It's not some kind of body double doing stunts. I mean it might be at some points, but for the most part it is very much him. Um, so he makes an awesome Mandalorian, um, and he hates droids. He hates droids, but he reluctantly worked with one in the last one after it interfered with the bounty uh, mission, and then killed it before it killed Baby Yoda. Um, so yeah, so he was given that by a guy, by, by a guy working for the Empire. He had like a bodyguard troop of stormtroopers and stuff. So they wanted Baby Yoda for themselves, but they said that to, if, if you know, if push comes to shove, if stuff goes sideways then they would also accept proof of termination as um, as proof of the bounty. So the droid took that to mean, oh, just kill it anyway. Uh, but no, so I don't know what's going to happen with this one. I mean, I'm, I mean, I think it's safe to assume he's not going to hand a child over to the Empire. Um, and it's 50, and it's from, it's 50, but it's from Yoda's species. So it's, you know, he was like almost a thousand years old, just over a thousand years old, like 900 to a thousand years old, so he lived for a long, long time. Uh, but this isn't Yoda. No, this is not Yoda. Um, or is it? No, no, because this, this is set after after Return of the Jedi, yeah, before The the Force Awakens, yeah, so, yeah, he's, he died long before that. Um, but, yeah, so we met him, we met the armor as well, the armor melts down stuff and makes armor they like a, an armor wood. She also has like a, a closet full of weapons and stuff. So that's cool. And he carbonites people. He carbonizes people the way you know they did to Han Solo in 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 in, in the I think it was in was it in the Empire Strikes. But yeah, timeline wise, I don't know how the stuff like uh, like it exactly lines up. I just remember stuff happens and it's either in this movie or that movie. So yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess we'll see what happens to Baby Yoda and how the Mandalorian decides to go about um, protecting this bounty as we progress further into the series. So yeah, that's all I have from the ep from episode one. So episode two, chapter two, the child. Let's go. Oh, so cute! A little green baby, <laughs> literally a little green baby. Yeah. I think, had you not seen E.T., had you not seen the E.T. movie, this is basically what you'd expect E.T. to be, just a little green baby. You know, like a little green man. Yeah, there's jumping. That's, that's a cool shot, the reflection showing off his arm, yeah. Oh, okay, oh. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, ooh. There we go, oh, there's two of them. Oh, three of them. Oh, jeez. No, don't you dare go near that baby. No. Oh. Oh. He disintegrated him. Okay. Oh, they had fobs. They had the trackers for the bounty. Yeah, so he's not the only one after him. First it was the droid. The droid was after the same bounty. Now it's actual other bounty hunters. The Empire really wants Baby Yoda, don't they? Is he force sensitive? Is Yoda's species force sensitive or is it just Yoda? Is he gonna heal him? No, he's gonna heal him. Oh, look at his tiny little hands! Oh god! <laughs> it's like little teeny tiny claws! <laughs> Oh, 
god, I don't think I, I, don't think I would get over Yoda. No, it's, it's either Baby Groot or Baby Yoda. Disney, you can't make me choose like that. <laughs> oh, he's back, he's trying to heal him. He's trying to heal you, Mando. Let him heal you. You saved his life, let him repay you the favor. More hunters? Are those Ewoks? Are those Ewoks? Those, the, those sound like Ewoks. Or like, no, the desert people even, not Ewoks. The desert, the sand people. Yeah, sand people. Oh, damn. Oh, he's blowing them all up. Yeah, he's blowing them all up. Oh. <laughs> My baby just, just running up there. Dude, wait for me, wait for me. Oh, he's actually hitching a ride. Where's Baby Yoda gone? Is he still there? Is he still just- is he still trying? How fast can he go? Oh no. Ooh! Okay, that's quick. That was quick. No, yeah, he's tagging behind, yet. Yeah. Pretty sure he's actually making his own thing hover. He's making his own thing hover. Yeah, so he has to be force sensitive, yeah. Oh, oh. Ouchie. Good thing he got a helmet. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh no! Say him, baby Yoda. Oh no, too late. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> He's just sitting there waiting the whole time for him to wake up. Oh, they stole all of his weapons. Seriously? Oh, jeez. Oh, they stole basically everything. They cut all the wires. They just practically just dismantled the ship. Nope, the power's cut. Oh, the engine, okay. Okay. Stop with the cooing, it's too cute. <laughs> That's a really cool shot. That's a really, really cool shot. No, oh, you caught one. I will take you to them. I have spoken. Yeah, he has spoken. <laughs> oh, oh, he's trying to swat. Oh, it's like baby Groot swallowing stuff. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. Mm -hmm. They're not going to steal that too, are they? And just dupe him or something. No, oh, he speaks Jawa. Oh, terrible job. <laughs> Is that like a monkey? <laughs> oh, oh! He has a fire blaster? He has a fire blaster? Okay. Not the baby. Not the baby. Not the baby. You are not touching baby Yoda. No. Suka. Suka. Isn't that Russian for bitch? The cinematography in this show is so damn good. Like those landscape shots and everything. Well, you can tell a lot of production value went into this. Now oh, it's got everything locked and loaded. Mm hmm. Fire blaster, knife, gun on his back, blaster at the ready. Yeah, you can face off whatever, whatever's in there. Oh. Oh, geez. We're gonna see the eyes, aren't we? Oh, the eyes! <laughs> oh, damn! Oh. Oh, is that a rhino? Okay, clearly not a rhino, but like a space rhino, perhaps. Oh, Jesus. Oh, damn it. Oh, God. Oof. <laughs> oh, no. 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 No, 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 no. Oh, there we go. Okay, he has control over it. Okay, he can control the pod. Okay, that's good. Oh, so maybe he's controlling the pod then. Okay. Oh no. Oh! Oh, don't get your head crushed again! <laughs> oh! Eesh! Oh yeah, you're going for a ride now. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, his arm is damaged. His arm is damaged. Uh, one last chance. <laughs> yeah, just... Yeah! <laughs> Oh, he's force sensitive! He's force sensitive! Yeah, no need to fight. Your yeah, baby Yoda's got your back. <laughs> baby Yoda's got your back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, that music, I love it. Oh, he can only take so much, though. He can only handle so much. Oh! 
Oh, there we go. Took a lot out of them both to take that mod horn down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that took a lot out of him. And he's only a baby. He's only a child. Even at 50, he's only a child. Do you guys have an idea how, how hard it's to take down a mud horn? Do you? Or do you just care about the egg? He's here. He's here. Yeah. You can't even wait just a little bit. There's like a baby mud horn in there. No, it's food. It's food. It's goo. Suka. <laughs> Suka. Yeah, just goo. It looks like a cream egg. Oh, Jesus Christ. So tiny, so tiny. Uh, lots of welding and wiring and hammering and everything. Yep. I could use a crew member of your ability, mm. and I can pay handsomely. I am honored, but I have worked a lifetime to finally be free of servitude. Mm. I understand. Yeah. Um, all I can offer is my thanks. That's great. Thank they got along really well life. together. Yeah. Thank you for bringing peace to my valley. Great, well, I hope we can see him again at some point. He's a great character. I have spoken. <laughs> you have indeed spoken, yeah. Please, feel free to speak again <laughs> further down the series. <laughs> oh, now he's awake. Great, now he's awake. Oh. I love that. No, oh, I love that, I love that, I love that. Yeah, you can definitely tell us something about John Favreau. Um, yeah, okay. End of the episode. Um, so... Yeah, that was that was fantastic. That was a great episode, great continuation. Um, so, yeah, so there were other bounty hunters then. I don't know why that was. Like, because I think the first person they reached, um, the first person they reached out to, or at least the first person that um, grief, uh, grief Karga, the guy, the the guy in the restaurant who actually offered him the chit. Um, he, I think he, I think he didn't mention any other bounty hunters on the case, and he gave it, and he said that this was a one of a kind case, um, uh, and that it was a, a case for the Empire. So I don't know why they, why they suddenly have other bounty hunters on the case too. Like they first they had the droid coming in and screwing everything up, and then um, he chose to kill. Um, and I think given that it's Baby Yoda and it's the Empire who wants it, this child of the species, um, you know, I'd guess that the, the ones who came after the Mandalorian, the, 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 the ones who came in this episode, they wanted to kill it. They wanted to kill it. I think, you know, the, the guy that was running after his pod clearly didn't look like he was just going to snatch it up and go away. He looked like he was actually about to shank him or something. Um, and they all, that, they all had this tracking for him. So I, I'm guessing that, you know, because of the Mandalorian's reputation and stuff, they, they, they maybe expected a quicker job or maybe they got, like, you know... Maybe there was like in the dro in the droid. Maybe there was some kind of failsafe. Maybe there was some kind of failsafe that you know, it, that that like sent a message back in case it got destroyed. Because I think he did kill the droid. So in case it got destroyed, it sent a message back saying mission failed or mission sabotaged or something like that. So then they got a hint like that. Um, but then the other droid. So so then they sent more bounty hunters after it to actually try and take down the thing. So. Yeah, so I think right, and and I think in this episode we see hints. We see hints that you know the Mandalorian. He doesn't really see this as a, a as an ordinary case of he's he was warned that it's a, it's a fairly one of a kind case. But now that he's actually seen what the bounty is, it's a child. What you know, like what kind of bounty would a child be? And he knows what it's like to be taken like that. Like he he was a foundling, so I think he's got a lot more concerns that he that he he's got, he's got more concerns than he's actually putting forward or showing. Um, about Baby Yoda being the bounty, so I think he, especially since, especially since he's a child, he does not want to have to kill it. Like you know, they said, um, and I think that probably makes him wonder too. They also said that you know we know this this job can be you know um, pretty you know sideways at times. So if you know if you need to, then we will also accept proof of termination as you know as a bounty. So it's like you know now that he knows what the now he knows what the bounty is. Like why would they accept the termination of a child as the bounty? Um, but yeah, so I think we 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 like it's kind of slowly sowing the seeds for that concern, and then slowly sowing the seeds for what he might do instead if he doesn't actually deliver it or what he's going to do. So 
Um, so that was cool to see. But baby Yoda, he's so cute. He's so cute. Like when he was trying to heal up the man, like you see, see, like he's literally just a teeny tiny little claw fingers and stuff. It's like a, like a baby's foot almost. And you know, he's just so successful. And uh, yeah, like um, you know, baby Yoda or baby Groot, they're both products of Disney. I don't. I can't choose. I, could, I mean, if we had a crossover in the future, I would be ecstatic about that. But I can't choose between baby Groot and baby Yoda. Okay, I mean. One of them's no longer a baby anymore. Now we have Teenage Groot, you know, in the years between Guardians 2 and Endgame and Infinity War, we, 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 we had him growing up into Teenage Groot. So I think here's, I think in order to revisit that cuteness, we have to go back and see Guardians 2. But now with Baby Yoda, we have Baby Yoda. I don't think there's going to be any, I don't think there's going to be any time jumps for season one and season two. But, um, <clears throat> but for now, only one of them remains a baby but yeah baby Yoda oh, he's just he's just he's just too much I mean Yoda himself was a extremely you know you know like small being so he himself he was like a he was like like a, over 900 years old he was still like a like an adult um and full of wisdom and stuff so it was like I think he with Yoda it was less of like with Yoda it was less cute and it was just more like you know it's at times funny like Somewhat funny, but also just iconic, pretty much. But with Baby Yoda, it's you know it's very visibly understandable. He doesn't really talk. He just he just coos all the time, and he's chasing off the animals and ate one of them. And he tried to and he tried to actively heal the Mandalorian too when he was trying to cauterize the wound and everything. So, you know he's he's there to help him. He even helped him with the um with, with, with the mud horn. He's he's force sensitive then. So he is he is I think somewhat force sensitive. I mean, I makes me wonder if the if the Yoda species is. Force sensitive as a whole, or if it's actually select members, and we're just lucky enough to get yet another force sensitive Yoda. I don't, and even even the Mandalorian saw it. Even when you know he you know he was struggling to even hold his knife out as one final kind of fighting move against the Mudhorn, and then it just stopped, and he saw it hover in the ground. And he looked behind him, and he saw Baby Yoda just holding him backwards. And so he's seen that before. He's 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 aware of this stuff. This stuff has happened. You know the the Empire fell because of you know Luke Skywalker and all, all, all the rebels. So. Um, so he's aware of what the force is and what it can do and what it looks like too. So I think that makes him wonder, like, you know, is this is this stuff still around? Is that really still around? Because I think Luke, I think after, I mean, because then we see that in The Force Awakens, the, the big thing with Luke was that he exiled himself. I mean, it's set years and years afterwards, and this is set somewhat, ha like, halfway between. But still, in that time, he did go away, he did try to train other Jedis, and then it all went tits up, and then he exiled himself. So, it, like, signs of the Force are somewhat rarer now, um, dark or light, pretty much. So, this is his first time seeing someone who's Force sensitive, and it's, and it's Yoda as well. I mean, Yoda is also known. He knows that you know he, he likely knows that this is a member of Master Yoda species. <clears throat> um, but because um, I think those stories would still be told down the line as well. Those stories would be still be spread down the line, and people would talk. So he knows that stuff. So he's. Again, it, and it's, it's another thing that raises kind of, it's the child, but it's also a force sensitive member of Yoda species. So, you know, two things that kind of, you know, just kind of jumble up in his mind and make him process a lot more. Um, so that was cool. But he, I, th I think, so Baby Yoda himself wasn't carrying the pod then. He, he can he can walk. He can jump out of the pod and he can walk and stuff. He's quite quite, quite slow, given he's a baby, but he can still walk. But he, I thought, I thought, I thought he was using his own force to actually carry the pod. But then that would, you know, that's a continuous exertion of the force. And it would probably take, it, would, it probably wouldn't have worked as well when he was taking down the muddle. So no, he, um, the Mandalorian actually has the, the remote control in his, in his gauntlets. And he actually carries the pod too. So when he was actually moving it out of the way for the mud horn, and stuff, so yeah, so it can travel fast, <laughs> just very easily taggy along beside him when he was hanging off the the uh, the, the 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 vehicle of the carrier for the for the Jawas and stuff. Um, so that's cool. Uh, but yeah, the Jawas they made a comeback. I thought I think I called them sand people. I think they are. I, th I think they are sand people, right? I think I I, I think I, at first I thought I th at first I thought they were Ewoks because their size, but then the noises they made were not Ewok like. So then I, I remembered. Oh yeah, they were in a New Hope. They were like the the sand people. That like except that, except they didn't have red. I don't think the Sandy had red eyes. I don't think that they, I think. I mean, maybe in the remastered versions, maybe. I don't know, but they were you know cloaked and hooded figures where you couldn't really see their face. I, th I think they had red eyes, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think I think I think I think I remembered Luke calling them the Sand People or something. So yeah, so that's how I remember them. But they they are Jawas and they are very very dickish. They steal stuff and then they make you trade other stuff in return for the stuff that they stole from you. Um, and they wanted an egg. They wanted an egg. They want like so. The right, the space rhino was called a mud horn, and it had an egg that cracked open, produced yellow goo that they call suka. And to my knowledge, suka is um, 
Suka is a, I, I think it's Russian for bitch. I, I'm, I think I'm not sure. I think yeah. I mean, my Russian isn't very, very fluent. Um, just very, very, you know, just too, uh, you know, basically that one word. Um, but um, um, but yeah. So the the uh, the egg is a, not an animal, not a baby mud horn. Thank God they didn't eat a live baby mud horn. Uh, I think the Mandalorian probably would have stopped them if that was the case. But no, they cracked it open and it's like a yellow goo, like a almost like a yolk. It, it, it looked like a cream egg to me. It reminded me of a cream egg, except without the whites and stuff. Yeah, and they were all tearing it apart, trying to get some, trying to get some suka. <laughs> So that was that. So he tra he got he got the egg for them. It took a lot out of him and that baby Yoda. Baby Yoda especially, you know, knocked himself out. Um, trying to, to trying trying to levitate the mud horn, and then the Mandalorian finally stuck a knife in him. It took it took a lot of the Mandalorian too. I mean, you can't blame him. He was getting you know you know head butted with the horns and, and dragged around and knocked around in the mud and stuff. So it took a lot out of him. But he finally got one knife in its side and took it out. So that was cool. So he got them the egg and then he got his parts back. Um, I don't know if they mentioned. I need to go, I think, I'm going to go back and check, see if they mentioned the I have spoken dude's name, because I can't remember his name, and, I, and all I know about him is that he speaks, he speaks a lot, he has spoken. Um, okay, they haven't mentioned his name as of yet, <clears throat> so I don't know who the hell he is, but apparently he's voiced by Nick Nolte, I have <laughs> no idea who that might be. Um, so that's uh, some research I can do, I suppose, um, but yeah, he... He's a great character. He yeah he helped that lot. He helped him get to the encampment in the first place. Taught him how to ride those blurgs, um, and he um, he helped him get that. And then he helped him put his shit back together. Helped him get to the Jawas. Made them help him cut the deal. So he's a great character. They they got they got along fairly well. Um, so I hope we see him again soon at some point in the season. I think he he was offered the he was offered like a, a place on the crew, like a crew member, but. He ha he pointed out that he's actually worked a long time to be able to actually finally retire in 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 in, in some kind of way, and he's worked a long time to be able to kind of you know live, live, live a life of more freedom. So the Mandalorian respected that, and he um, offered him fair farewell and offered him his thanks and stuff, and said farewell. So they got along really well. They got along really well. So it's cool to see him. Um, the Mandalorian we we mentioned that weapons are a part of his religion. Then so the Mandalorian said, so I mean. There's a guild, there's a guild of bounty hunters, but I don't know if they're all Mandalorian. I mean, well, they, they can't be because the, the, the droid was a member of the guild, and the droid isn't Mandalorian, and those other bounty hunters who showed up at the beginning of this episode, um, they were they clearly weren't Mandalorian. So I think it's just Mandalorians are in the guild, but not everyone in the guild is actually Mandalorian. The Mandalorians just become bounty hunters, they're good at what they do, but the guild is just full of other people who are also bounty hunters. Um, so, so the Mandalorians, I mean, I have no idea who they are. Again, my 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 knowledge of what happens in the Star Wars universe is fairly limited to the movies. I know there are other stuff like TV shows, Clone Wars. I've just started watching that. That's pretty fun. Um, and now this as well. And then there, I think that, 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 that there are games that do their own self-contained stories and stuff. There are comics. I, I was surprised to to, to see that. I, I, I never knew there were actually comics of Star Wars, but that's a thing, so it's a very expansive universe, a very expansive universe with a, with a ton of lore and a lot to get through, so I'm sure in time I'll understand this stuff a bit better, and if you guys have any information that would help me as well, by all means, the comments are open, share your thoughts and everything, um, but yeah, but he mentioned my weapons are a part of his religion, so the Mandalorians, I feel like, you know, the, 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 they are just people who are good at this stuff, good at what they do, whether, whether they're bounty hunters or whether they're weapons makers, like the armorer, um, or just you know, like the the I think it was I think it was Jango Fett who made the um who made the clone army as well, uh back in back in the prequel trilogy. So he he did that. So they 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 they're good at this line of work, at like warfare and combat and that kind of stuff. So I don't I, mean, I don't know if they'd be involved in peacekeeping too much. I mean the Mandalorian. I mean this guy he he's not inherently bad. He's he's not like a killer. I mean he's capable of killing, but he doesn't just go around killing innocent people. He does it for a cut. He does he you know he does he does the job no matter who it is. He, and he, you know, he, he catches them, he carbonizes them, and then has them over, so he's, he's got some sense of a moral code, he doesn't, he doesn't condone killing people, and we see in the very beginning of the episode, we saw that, you know, the, 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 the droid was going to go ahead and kill the child, but, you know, the Mandalorian stopped him, so he has some sense of a code, and especially, I think, his past, him being a foundling, that also very much helps, too, he knows what it's like to lose that side of yourself, and to lose that much, so he, 
does share some sense of empathy so i think that's going to be something really cool to explore like you know what he's willing to do and what lines he's willing to cross and also what maybe what aspects of his bounty hunter code he actually you know betrays because in in order to protect baby at all in order to further preserve his existence so i think that's gonna be really cool to see but yeah, now he's now he's off the planet. He's off the planet, so now he's got a working ship again, and he's got Baby Yoda. So I think it'll be, yeah. I think I mean I don't see him handing over handing him over instantly, or even if he does, I think he's gonna he's gonna hand him over, or gonna try and hand him over. He's, he's gonna get to that meetup point, you know, and then he's gonna and then they're, they're gonna try. And he's gonna either overhear or he's gonna find out the truth behind what their intentions are. They're, 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 I mean, even if he doesn't hand them over, they just want the child dead. So that's why that's why they ask for proof of termination. So even if you can't give the child over, proof of termination, at least we know he's dead that way. But, you know, if, if you hand them over, then they may want to go. I mean, the doctor, I mean, the doctor guy, I don't know. The, 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 the doctor guy said that proof of termination wasn't a part of their original deal. Um, so I don't know how he feels about it. I think he maybe wants to experiment on him or see what's ma what makes him that. Because I think, you know, baby Yoda, I think he's maybe because of the Yoda species like because their lifespan is so expansive maybe they want to find out what makes them do that I mean we live in a, a galaxy full of all different types of aliens so these guys I don't think they I don't even know or, know or think if they're I mean I don't know are they human because Earth isn't a thing Earth is not a thing in the Star Wars universe is it I don't know I don't think so yeah I don't think so like you know like Ray, Poe, Finn, Luke, Han I don't, I don't think they're humans are they? Because they're like, they're definitely not from Earth. Again, to my knowledge, Earth is not a part of the Star Wars universe. I don't know how these human looking people, how their biology differs. Um, we see aliens, we see aliens with like, you know, bug eyed stuff and did like, you know, five hearts and, you know, maybe not in, just no lungs as well. Like, they, they, they breathe some, you know, in some other way. But they like, these are the main characters. They, they, they look human and sound human and act human, but they're not, they're not strictly human. They, they're, they're from different alien planets. So. I don't know. Correct me on that one. Yeah, that, that's, that's 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 one piece of Star Wars, Star Wars lore I'm not too um, too um, too knowledgeable on. But yeah, so I don't know what their intentions are with them. Again, I think it's I mean mainly it's the Empire and they they they're aware of Yoda's existence and they're aware of their history with the Yoda species. So they want to just kill this one or find out if it's false sensitive and if it is. Um, imprison it or kill it or something or maybe they just want to convert it to is it to, to the empire side i don't know i mean it's not a thing anymore but there's still you know, these few people left maybe maybe, maybe these these stormtroopers and the client guy and maybe they're, 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 they're the ones who help birth the first order maybe they're the ones who plant the seed who, who, who help plant the seeds and they're the ones still keeping that darkness alive but i don't know i guess we'll see what happens but yeah, I mean, we're only two episodes in, so we're not going to get everything, but it's still, I think, it's still, it's, it's nice that they're still giving us enough for us to, you know, speculate on, you know, what their true intentions could be and what this, what, what it could all mean, so, yeah, fun stuff, fun, fun stuff, but that is all I have from this episode, again, if I missed anything out, if you guys have any other theories or any better theories, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, looking forward to the rest of the series again. The rest of the series, I feel, is just gonna be it's, it's literally just gonna be the adventures of the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. That's all it's gonna be. So, yeah, looking forward to all of that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, that is it. So that was the Mandalorian season one, episode two, chapter two, titled "The Child." So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn that like button. Uh, comment on the episode on what you think is coming up next uh, next time on the Mandalorian. Uh, and yeah. That's it. Oh, the, the uncut reaction will be on Patreon, so feel free to go check that out too. Um, and yeah, that is it. That's it. So, I will see you guys next time. Bye.